The second type of transformations are stretches. And this is when the graph is stretched or squeezed by a set factor. So there are two types again, there is outside and inside the function. We'll start with outside the function. And this is of the form y is equal to a f of x, where a is a constant, it's outside the function, so it's the outside the function uh, stretch. And the effect of this is it times is all y values by a. Remember it's going to be y values because it's outside the function. Another way of saying this to make graph sketching easier is it stretches or squeezes if a is less than zero the graph along the y-axis by a factor of a. So let's do an example to illustrate this. We're going to use the same functions before f of x and uh, f of x equals x plus 3, x minus 5, the same uh, quadratic. And let's say a is equal to 2, so y is equal to 2 f of x, and we want to sketch this. So as we times all y values by a, we know that the y-intercept, the transformed y-intercept, is going to be minus 15 times 2, which is minus 30. So the new y, the transform y-intercept is going to be somewhere down here. And then we just um, sketch the graph um, kind of stretched by 2. So if we uh, if we sketch this, I'm going to do it from the y-intercept again, because I think that'll make it easier. It's going to look something like this. Here something like that where this is minus 30 and the roots don't actually change the reason for this is because if you think about it the roots have a y value of 0 so if you times this by 2 it's still going to be 0 so the roots are going to be the exact same and remember to label it so this is going to be y is equal to 2 f of x um, really quick let me just uh, illustrate a squeeze um, it's pretty self-explanatory it's going to be the uh, exact same except it's going to be uh, in the opposite direction it's going to be a squeeze let's do y is equal to half f of x so the y intercept this time is going to be minus 15 times a half which is going to be minus 15 over 2 so it's going to be somewhere about here and if we sketch this it's going to look something like this and on this side it's going to look like this here, where we sketch it like that, where this is going to be minus 15 over 2, and remember to label this is going to be y is equal to half f of x. You kind of still need to get the um, shape right, if that makes sense. Like, as you can see for um, the stretched graph, uh, I've still put the turning point sort of over here. Um, so you still need to make the graph um, look uh, very similar. It's kind of hard to do on a drawing tablet, but when you do it on pencil, it's a lot easier to do. You just need you need to make the shape the same. You just need to stretch the shape um, by two. And in terms of the equation, it timeses the whole thing by a. And this makes sense because it's just y is equal to a times f of x. So for our example y is equal to 2 f of x, the equation is going to become y is equal to 2 times f of x, which is x plus 3 x minus 5. And that's quite easy to understand because you're just going to times the whole function up here by 2. The second type of stretch is the so-called inside the function. And this is of the form y is equal to f of a of x, where the uh, the a is inside the bracket, so therefore it's inside the function. And the effect of this is it divides all x values by a. Remember, if it's inside the function, it will affect the x values. And it's going to divide it this time. Um, because remember, it's always going to have the opposite effect of what you expect it to be when it's inside the bracket. It doesn't times all x values by a, it divides all x values by a. And another way of saying this is it squeezes or stretches if a is less than 1. Because remember, if you divide something by half, you're actually timesing it by 2. So therefore, that would be a stretch if a is less than 1. Squeezes or stretches the graph... 
along the x-axis by a factor of a. So it squeezes uh, the graph along the x-axis this time by a factor of a. So it squeezes it by a factor um, of a. It doesn't stretch it. So let's do an example. Let's do let's make a equal to 2 and let's do y is equal to f of 2x. So you're going to divide all the x values by a. So the roots are, all, are going to be divided by 2. So the new roots would be minus 3 over 2 like that and 5 over 2 like that. So there's going to be a root here and there's going to be a root here. Uh, the y-intercept is going to be the same which I'll explain in a sec. So if we sketch this it's going to look something like this. I started from the y-intercept again because I thought that would be easier um, to draw it. Where the roots are going to be 5 over 2 and minus 3 over 2. And the y-intercept stays the same because if you think about it, the y, uh, the uh, x value is 0. So if you divide 0 by 2, it's still 0. So the, uh, so the y-intercept is just going to stay the same. Remember to label it. So it's y is equal to f of 2x. So it squeezes the graph in this instance. Um, of course, if it's less than um, if it's less than uh, one, it will um, stretch it. I won't go through this in too much detail because I kind of explained a very similar example. But if it's y is equal to f of half of x, the uh, roots will become uh, ten and minus six, and it would look something like this instead. I I, I haven't drawn it accurately because I kind of think the previous slide kind of um will give you some indication of how you would do it, but it would look something um, like uh, that, for example. Okay, in terms of the equation, it's going to have a similar effect to the inside the function before, where you are now doing the function in the form of a of x rather than in the form of x. So all you're just going to do is write the function, but replace all the values of x with the value of a of x. Um, so the new function is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 3, 2x minus 5. And you can see now why the roots are uh, minus 3 over 2 and 5 over 2. And you can also see why the y-intercept stays the same as these values are um, unaffected. So they could ask you to transform quartics as well. So uh, for example, g of x is equal to x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. And they could ask you to stretch the quartics. For example, uh, they could do y is equal to 2 of g of x. So the y-intercept is going to go up by times 2, so it's going to be minus 12. The roots are going to, uh, sorry, 12. The roots are going to be the same. Remember that you need to stretch the graph by a factor of 2. So if we sketch this, I'm going to start from the y-intercept because I think it'll be easier. It's going to look something like this, and then the turning point needs to be twice as big, so it's like that. I might make the turning point a tiny bit more round, like that. And then it's going to come up like this, and then the other side is going to look like this, and then like this, and then up like this. Remember to label this as y is equal to 2g of x and the new uh, y intercept to label is 12. The roots are the same so we don't need to label them again. Um, really quick, I didn't talk about this too much on the last uh, slide, but you need to distinct between these two lines. The y is equal to 2g of x is going to shoot up quicker and therefore it's going to be on the left of this line because all the y values are times by 2 and it's the same over here where it shoots up quicker so it's going to be to the right of the other line there because it's y is equal to 2g of x. So note that when you're drawing it and you will need to draw it like that. And the equation is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. They could also do an inside the function uh, stretch, so for example, y is equal to g of half of x. So this is actually a stretch in the um, x uh, direction because it's half, remember it's the opposite. So we're going to divide all the roots by half to get minus 6, 
minus 2, 2 and 4. The y-intercept is going to be the same, so I'm going to start my sketch from here and it's going to look something like this. Remember, you stretch it by a factor of 2 in the y and the x direction. And note that this is going to shoot up slower now, so I'll do it one more time. So it's going to sort of be a bit more like this, where it's going to shoot up slower because we stretch it in the x direction. And if we do this side, it's going to look like this, and then like this, and then like this. It's going to shoot up slower, and because we're stretching it in the x direction this time, uh, and this line is going to be, remember to label y is equal to g half of x and remember to label the new roots as minus 6 minus 2 2 and 4 and the new equation is going to be y is equal to half x plus 3 half x plus 1 half x minus 1 and half x minus 2 so now let's do the stretches for the reciprocal graph. Um, so for 1 of x, let's do y is equal to 2hx first. So the asymptotes are going to stay the same because you've, uh, it's 2 times uh, 0 is uh, still going to be 0. So um, it's not going to make a difference to the asymptotes. The best way to think about this is that for every, y of, for every uh, value of x, the y value it gives out is going to be doubled, it's going to be times 2. So basically you're just going to do uh, double what the y value is for the x values. So it's going to look like this actually. Where on this graph uh, and on this graph here it is the same except for this graph you times the y values it gives up by 2. So it's going to be um, twice as big. Um, and if you label this, it's going to be y is equal to 2hx. And the transformed equation is y is equal to 2 over x. If you want to, you can think about it like this instead. We talked about this in the reciprocal video. Um, so maybe just write it in the, um, in the uh, equation form, and it might be easier to uh, figure out uh, how to sketch it. And f let's do the inside the function. So let's do y is equal to h. 2x. Now the logic is the same. First of all, the asymptotes are going to be the same because uh, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Um, now the logic is the same in terms of um, how you do it before, but it gets a bit weird because of terms of how x value works, etc., etc. The best way uh, that I would do this is first of all just realise if there's two of x, it's just going to get um, it's just going to uh, get smaller. But the other way to do this is you could write out the equation. So the equation is going to be y is equal to 2x under 1, which is equivalent basically to a half times 1 over x, which is equivalent to a half over x, aka the numerator is twice as small as it used to be. It's, twi it's a half of um, 1. So therefore, what you can do is you can see that it's going to be under this, like this. So the equation is going to be, uh, so the graph is going to be like this, where it's going to be under it in uh, this uh, example, um, like this. Um, that's the way that I would do it, is writing out the equation and then just figuring it out like that quickly in my head. Um, or you could just kind of uh, realise how the relationship works um, between uh, the 2x. And of course, as I just said, the equation will become y is equal to 1 over 2x. And remember to uh, label the uh, translated graph.